We So some lovely merry girls at the outset. Ruby's first time in the TARDIS makes her an onboarding to, let's face it, a very odd idea for a show. In case you've never heard of it, this wonderful skeletal console, colour changing lights, colour changing lights, I've got those, Green River, Wyoming, which still looks beautiful today, Rubathon Blue, 57th Hatchlings, open up the extended media floodgates. Millie Gibson does have Billy Piper energy. Lots of questions, lots of excitement. Very routine, running up and down corridors and silly monsters. And it's an event for the ears. Listen, and Mary Gold's little touches are subtle and nuanced, delicate backgrounds. And then we meet Eric and friends. So cute. I hope Eric doesn't turn out to be the monster. Oh no, they can. They're like nearly born anti Daleks. Hey, maybe they'll get a shooty to try out their pram. Kids are such a novel idea to soften hearts. I say that. I fucking hate kids. I like the design of the space station. It's like a rattle or a stroller. <laughs> I suppose it's a bit like Babylon 5. Uh-oh. The idea is adorable jackpot. Each baby has a distinctive look and personality. Maybe the episode's only what moment is Judy messing with the baby's heads. That was pretty mean. So scary. <laughs> Brutal, bruv. It's the recession. The government closed the baby station to save money. A combination of cute and wire action drama lets his guest protagonist and our leads thrill. The monster has a terrifying, like H.R. Geiger design. <laughs> Boogeyman, the boogeyman. There's a horror never being glimpsed in full. I mean, I guess it could be if we assemble footage of it into some kind of patchwork puzzle board like only a freak would do. A hundred pieces may contain choking hazard. And if you think I'm going to show you a perfectly paused still, you can plug it. Mm. Nappies are changed at 1800 hours. Dapper time! What's the Dapper time! <laughs> The pacing first time around Poppy's flamethrower victory felt a bit blink and you miss it. And how's she supposed to get any trajectory with that little pea plume? Ooh. Anyway, it's too close to where she'd keep her tummy tippy mug. RTD's your brilliant pat on the back shtick works so well from Chitty's mouth and with these child actors, the camera work never condescends to them. The set and lighting is properly large, metalworks industrial. And midnight threat level, all blues and black, Murray Gold's score and the sound mixing generally keeps things moving along, so there's little time for children with blank template characters anyway. No ciphers here, and by result, no patronising to viewers of any age. And it's only when we do get that coasting on cuteness. Hey, are we the coolest? Humans are so neat. It was a baby. A space baby. That it's employed as the discovery of a pivotal story reveal. Fungus a Pokemon. So funny. No. no. Ah, they're so well behaved. If it wasn't for the adults and their noise. <laughs> oh well that's ruined. It'll be up all night now. Director Julianne Robinson is knocked out of the park here, keeping all the pieces moving and looking impressive. By treating the babies as characters rather than gimmicks or plot devices, and dialing back his gimmick fetishism for the bogeyman, RTD turns in a Who script which is up there with Turn Left and Midnight. Harry Ami, come on, man. Yes. You see the scan of Ruby Sunday. What do you think it means? I'm dealing with the fizzle. And we leave off on Christmas Day with perpetually grumpy Michelle Greenridge. But no Mrs. Flood. You wouldn't like her when she's Angie. Space babies address issues of difference early on with the baby's bodies not growing in time with their abilities. As well as Poppy's felt failure as a captain. And an Eric's impairment, which does thwart heroism. It plays out the through line with the bogeyman. So different as to be cast as a creature of pain. But we are subject to the same pain as Jocelyn, who is cornered by the carer's dilemma. Hang in there, or turn away, and turn down hope. 
The bogeyman existing in the colder lower decks is a metaphor for her suffering, but is only a part of the story, maybe the important part. If everyone on the station dies, the governments won't manifest its story. Space Babies is laden with politics, with mentions of genocide and refugees, yet does deliver with care and light-handedness. Compare it to Turn Left, a brilliant political tale, but overt about the authoritarian dystopia. So powerful, so looming large, it causes a disconnect because we cannot stand against it. Although what we can do is care. Also, there's mucus in your brain. Hit the like button and smash the subscribe. They've been very naughty.